He is like the pyromaniac pretending to be a fireman, except the hose is spraying gas on the inflationary fire rather than water. Doesn't he realize that all of his spending is putting the heat and the costs on our homeowners? We have a plan that is focused on ensuring that we are building more homes faster, making life more affordable, and growing an economy that works for all Canadians. The Conservative leader has no plan for affordability other than a bunch of taglines. He has no plan for, for addressing the environment. He has no plan for the economy. The energy minister and the leader of the Tories see the government's budget strategy two different ways, as you heard just there. The feds have been on a non-stop announcement blitz for the last week and a half, and it'll keep going until budget day, pardon me, just over a week from now. The idea is to convince, as you heard Dan say in the last block, younger Canadians the government knows they're hurting and the pain can be blunted. Is that strategy working? Let's bring back the front bench, Dan Moulton, Shakira Chambers, Kathleen Monk, and Laura Stone. Shakira, I'll, I'll start with you. What's your impression of how this rollout has been going so far? Uh, it's, it's kind of hard to gauge it. I mean, I haven't really seen any data or any polling. I'm sure some pollsters will have some, some stuff for us shortly. But I think for the Liberals, the big thing here is they've really been driving the narrative. Uh, it's good to see them have this change of communications where they were always taking off message earlier on in the year. Now they've come out, aside from the first three days where the carbon tax was really the focus of the debate, they've really settled in. Uh, in these last few days, they've controlled the narrative, controlled the message. So they're on a good track. I think uh, what I would say is, is what you said in the intro. They're showing people that they understand the issues, but are they showing that they can tackle these issues? And I think with the biggest one that we face with housing, there's, there's talking about billions and billions of dollars, which is fantastic. But we've said it before on this program, you're not going to see those results anytime soon. And I think for the liberals, as they go into, you know, two months from now, three months from now, even if they get some positive coverage of the, the, the numbers moving their direction, voters are going to want to see results. And the results are going to be, you know, our housing price is stabilizing, our rent price is stabilizing. And I don't think gonna, there's going to be a positive response to that. It's going to make a lot of voters angry. And so I think they're going to get that blowback of that anger two, three, four months down the road, even though they have some pretty splashy popular announcements right now. My guess is that that's why these announcements, Kathleen, are coming this year versus in an election budget next year, to try and give themselves as much runway as possible to be able to have those proof points. But to mm -hmm. Shakir's point, the stuff that will generate those proof points is not easy to manifest even in a year. No, I mean, and, and to generate the kind of reductions in shelter costs that Shakira is talking about, we're really going to need to see the bank um, start doing those cuts as well, too. But we did see some bad employment news um, last week um, and where the unemployment rates were ticking up. Um, that means that might put more pressure, frankly, on the ba bank to move quicker on those rate cuts, which would be helpful. But back to actually the Liberals' rollout, you know, I, I think that it's undeniable that they've controlled the media narrative, that they've spilled a lot of ink. They've got a lot of good ink, even um, the bad headlines, as I've said before, were good headlines for them. The question mm -hmm. is, how can they hold up this momentum, you know, in the next, you know, few days before the budget? And, and I wonder if Pierre Polyev isn't setting a trap for himself, saying it's all inflationary. And there's rumors that, of course, the Liberals may come out with some stuff on the revenue side. And if they do come up with new tax measures, whether they're on wealthy Canadians or wealthy corporations or something to bring in new cash into the, the government coffers, if that actually won't, you know, basically uh, set up Pierre to be in this awkward situation where they have the money to pay for some of the spending on housing that Canadians so desperately need. Yeah, I think the tax side of thing will be very interesting. Uh, we spoke to the parliamentary budget officer, Laura, just a little while ago on the program to get some perspective on that. I hadn't thought about it in necessarily the way he put it, which is even if they do levy a wealth tax, you have to consider the flight of assets to other places when you're looking at the overall impact of how, how much it will actually help the revenue side of things. But I think Kathleen... Uh, has a point there, like uh, the way in which they've been phrasing things, I think it's almost a guarantee there's some kind of new tax coming. It just won't be on middle income earners. Yeah, and I think I think you've hit the nail on the head with um, both kind of the success and the risk of, of the budget announcements. I mean, the success has been obviously in the communications of it, being proactive, looking like they're addressing um, the problems that that people are talking about. And I think the 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 flip side of that is that it gives people time to think, um, which is never a good thing. Uh, no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> it gives people time to think about, OK, wait, how are they going to pay for, for all of this? And, um, you know, how will the taxes work? And people such as yourself are doing interviews and, and with experts to, to try, pro, try to probe that. If you release the deluge on on budget day, there, there's less time to kind of have that analysis. 
now this is set up for, okay, we've tallied up all of your spending announcements as, as PowerPlay has done. How are you going to pay with it, pay for this? What does the taxes look like? Can we even tax assets that flee the country? So, um, so I think it has been a success from a communication standpoint, um, um, from uh, particularly in, in, in standing up to the conservatives that have really been driving the narrative on affordability. And you can see the pushback from, from the liberals now saying, all you have is a bunch of slogans and mini documentaries on YouTube. Um, we're actually coming forward with solutions. You see that from, from the liberals, but it does give the opposition um, and, and others time to, to come up with their opposition to what the government has been announcing. So in a, in a sense, it's, it's both risk and reward for the liberal government. Why do you think, I mean, the, the risk I, I sort of just jumping off everyone's point, Dan, is I think really being able to offer the proof points heading into the next election, which again, because of some of the issues are not going to be easy to see manifested. Why do you think the liberals at this point in time viewed that risk as a necessary one to take? Uh, well, I think it was important that they demonstrate a certain focus and a certain organize, level of organization in terms of their communication strategy in the lead up to this budget. And I think we're going to see that uh, continue after the budget, frankly. Whether or not it's uh, effective, I think Shakir made some great points there. It's going to take a little bit of time for us to start sealing, seeing whether or not it's impacting uh, voter preferences, and, and that'll probably take another month or so. But I don't think I've seen the government this focused uh, since the last election. I think they're driving a, uh, a serious uh, daily conversation uh, about what uh, the federal government needs to do to speak to uh, intergenerational anxiety that's manifested uh, between uh, millennial and Gen Z voters in this country. Uh, and I think they're really taking the fight to the provinces in a way that's drawing a lot of attention to what they're doing. Uh, I think that uh, confrontation is one that's going to continue to play out. Uh, I think it's smart of them to ignore Pierre Polyev and, and the slogans that he uses and take the fight to the provinces. Uh, premiers that are unwilling to get on board with some of the programs they're announcing uh, provide a very convenient foil for the prime minister uh, to present to voters. And I think we're going to see that uh, strategy continue to play out. We're about halfway through the communications rollout strategy. We're going to see another probably seven days of it in the lead up to the budget. And then I think uh, the budget will include a number of things they haven't announced yet that then they'll spend the weeks after pushing out there as, as continued new news. And so this seems to be a, a sustained effort. Um, and I think it is I think it's working so far. We're, we're going to need to see the data move to, to know that that's, uh, that's the case. Uh, but certainly they are, as everyone said, dominating the conversation every single day. And that is not something that they've been doing for the last 12 months, frankly. Just really quickly, Kathleen, last word to you, because, you know, I wish the world was consuming media like this all the time. But the truth is that they're not, right? And they're right. on very different mm -hmm. platforms. Do you anticipate ad buys or something to that effect that go beyond just trying to dominate the day-to-day news cycle on more uh, mainstream legacy media. Yeah, and we've seen some indication that they are using influencers to try to get on different channels to put put some testing out there. But what I'm seeing mainly, and they have to do more of that, they have to do more of paid media strategy to get out into those channels and into those little ecos ecosystems, you know, that, that the millennials are in. But what I'm interested in actually seeing is that this gelling that's happening of the liberal team, you know, there's some new staff members we've had, heard. When a team starts to gel like that and starts, they, it almost has a psychological effect on the whole team, right? When, you, when you've worked campaigns together it's and you've worked... It's been missing, It's be been fair, missing been, for yeah. years, like basically since the last election, as Dan said, since 2021, that they haven't been firing on all cylinders. And it seems like with a few new people, some in the finance ministers, some in the prime minister's office, it seems like this rollout is the test run for what they want to do this summer in terms of more of a shock and awe campaign. We shall see. Okay, mm -hmm. lots for us to discuss. Thank you so much, everyone. Our front bench, appreciate the discussion. Laura Stone, Shakir Chambers, Dan Moulton, and Kathleen Monk. Our takeaway is next.